In this video, I'm covering eight different grip case accessories for your Nintendo Switch. Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome to Time Lag Gaming. If you're new here, on this channel, I cover everything Nintendo from the perspective of a game developer, as well as give you behind the scenes videos on what I'm developing. Recently, in a Switch accessory video, I talked about how I personally did not like the Satisfy Pro Gaming Grip, and people wanted to know about other grips that are available for the Nintendo Switch. So I'll be comparing eight grip cases from thin to heavy duty to adding battery life to adding a better kickstand. This review will basically cover every type of grip out there so that you can find the grip that is best for you. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, and remember, links to all the products will be in the description. The most requested grip for me to check out was the Skull & Co Switch Grip. The Skull & Co Grip costs $20 on Amazon and is available in tons of different colors and combinations. There is also a $40 bundle that includes a case that will fit the grip. I honestly didn't think I was going to like it, but after using it, it has become one of my favorite grips for the Switch. What is unique about the Skull & Co is the actual colored grip parts can be detached from the body and it comes with two extra sets of grips. These two sets are different from the set already installed and helps you customize the grip so that it is comfortable for your hands. Each set has a different texture, size, and shape. It is impossible to make one grip case that will be comfortable for every person's hands, but Skull & Co have managed to do this with their customizable switch grip. You could even use a big grip on one side and a small grip on the other. The customization really makes it a grip that any Switch owner can enjoy no matter how big or small their hands are. Not only can this customization be used to adjust the size and feel of the grips, but also the colors. You can order standalone grips or just buy multiple grip cases and then mix and match to your desire. I have big hands, so I prefer the biggest grips on this case and it just feels natural to hold. What I like about this case that bothered me with the Satisfy Grip is it is comfortable to use the analog sticks and all the face buttons. With the Satisfy Pro Gaming Grip, I found it weirdly uncomfortable to switch between the face buttons and the analog stick. For the Skull & Co Grip, I was also impressed by the build quality and materials. The rubber they used is soft and pliable, but also feels sturdy. The flexible material also makes it easy to take the switch in and out of the grip. This is likely the reason I haven't noticed the case leaving any marks on the Joy-Con, which is really good because the Satisfy case can leave marks and scratches. The thin material and design also makes it possible to put your Switch into the dock with the case on, but I would not recommend this unless you have a glass screen protector because the extra thickness of the case will definitely scratch your screen by taking it in and out of the dock. It's a very tight fit. So if you do decide to buy this case, it's best you buy a screen protector as well. The case has precise cutouts for all the different vents and ports. It also has plastic over the power and volume buttons, and this makes them way easier to press, which is really good. One downside to this case is you can't use some Bluetooth adapters like the HomeSpot or Genki that let you connect Bluetooth headphones to your Switch. But there is the Gooly Kit Route Plus adapter that has an extended USB that will already work with this case. Overall, I definitely recommend this Switch Grip case to everyone. Next up, we have an officially licensed Nintendo Switch Grip made by RDS Industries. It costs $15 by itself and comes with an official microfiber cloth to clean your screen. It also comes in a $35 bundle that includes a case that fits the grip. It also includes other accessories like cartridge holders and analog stick grips. The RDS grip itself is very different than the Skull & Co grip and is similar to the Satisfy grip. The thing I like most about the RDS grip case is the grip handles are a grippy rubber material. This makes it even easier to hold onto. The back of the grips also have indents that offer different ways to hold the grip with your hands. The grip handles are smaller than the Satisfy and I think it'll be more comfortable for those with medium to small hands. It attaches to the Switch console itself and not the Joy-Con. This puts less stress on them and should prevent the Joy-Con from getting scratched up. You can even remove the Joy-Con from the grip and just have your Switch in it. 
However, removing the Joy-Con from the grip while it's still attached could cause some scratching as it is a tight fit on one side, but your experience could vary. The case leaves cutouts for the kickstand and actually makes the kickstand more stable as it can stand up on its own. It also has an open bottom, so you won't have any problems with charging or using Bluetooth adapters. Another aspect I like about the case is the design. I personally think the way it's designed looks very good attached to the switch. However, I do not like how all the screws are super visible. But you can tell they paid a lot of attention to the design, even down to not covering up the Nintendo Switch lettering, but covering up the messy lettering on the bottom. Just look at it compared to the Satisfy. It looks so much cleaner. Overall, the RDS Switch grip has a great design and it's actually really good. I personally found it a little cramped for my larger hands, but it's a solid option for those with small or average sized hands. Now we have the Axie Meat Switch case. This grip case was sent to me to review and it's very interesting. The Axie Meat is a heavy duty grip case. It not only offers a better grip, but lots of protection at a very low price. What is unique about it is you can detach the Joy-Con with the grip still on. A lot of grips that are similar to the Skull & Co are stuck in the case and you cannot remove the Joy-Con or the main body from the Switch. This also allows you to use the grips with the main body of the case removed. Because of that, it's super easy to switch to dock play or to use the TV or to use tabletop mode. I have two small issues with this case. The first is how it fits onto the Switch. It attaches easily, but it never really feels like it's all the way on. It is a secure fit and will not come off unless you want it to, but it's not a super snug fit, so it always feels a little bit loose. This is not a big issue, and I honestly think it's fine considering it only costs $10. Also, even though it can feel a little bit loose, it is secure enough that if you were to drop your switch with it on, then it would stay on and help protect your switch. In addition, I don't mind the somewhat loose fit, as all three parts of the case are easy to be removed and will not scratch your Joy-Con. My other issue is that in some situations with my larger hands, my pinkies don't really have anywhere to go on this grip. Although, if you take off the main body of the case, it is actually really comfortable because your pinkies can just sit on the edge of the grips. The Axie Me is bulky, but this is on purpose to add protection and a slightly better grip. It also looks pretty cool on the back with its geometric design. I'll be honest, the quality of the materials isn't that great. It's comfortable to hold and use, but it just doesn't feel that high quality. But the kickstand is a very nice addition. There are two blades that slide out of the case and become a sturdy kickstand. What's really unique about the case is being able to easily switch between different play styles. Because with most other cases out there, you have to take the entire case off in order to switch Joy-Con or to play in tabletop mode or to play in docked mode. So this is a great grip for people who want extra protection and like switching between handheld, tabletop, and docked mode. The Axie Me is definitely not for everyone, but for those who want these features, it's a solid choice. Yes, it doesn't feel the highest quality, but for only $10, it's worth it. When I was researching different grips for the Switch, I was looking for one that had a battery, and then I was actually sent one to review. This is the big blue battery switch grip that only costs $40. There are other switch grips out there that have batteries built in, but what's unique about this one is the battery section is easily removable. This is a very nice feature because when you don't need the extra battery, you can leave the battery section off. With the battery unattached, you still have the grips on the Joy-Con. This setup with just having these little grips is actually very comfortable. Doing so essentially creates the thinnest switch grip since the back is not covered. It also adds rigidity to the system as the Joy-Con grips overlap the back of the switch in order to help support the battery. The ridge between the grip and the back of the switch also adds a place for your fingers to rest and grip onto for added extra comfort. These grips that go on each Joy-Con can also each hold a Switch game and a micro SD card, which is a very interesting way to offer extra storage instead of having wasted space. Like the Axie Meat, the different parts also makes it very easy and flexible so that you can switch between handheld, tabletop, and docked mode. If you are using the battery and you want to switch to dock mode, you can simply take off the battery, leave the Joy-Con grips on, and put it into the dock. Or if you want to use tabletop mode, just slide the Joy-Con off and use the huge multi-angle kickstand. The versatility of this battery grip 
really fits well with the flexible play styles of Nintendo Switch. The battery itself is a 10,000 mAh battery and is advertised to be able to give your Switch an additional five to six hours of battery life. I found this estimate to be accurate. However, it varies based on what game you are playing, so the more intense games may give you less playtime. The battery also uses a direct USB-C connection, so it will actually charge your Switch while you play, unlike the other battery banks that will just trickle charge your Switch. You can also charge the battery with a USB-C cable, so you can charge it up quick. Not only will this battery case charge your Switch, but it can also charge other devices with the quick charge USB port on the back. This is a great addition and it makes the entire product more versatile because not only is it a great Switch accessory, but also a great backup for your phone, 3DS, or other devices. Now with all this charging, you could be worried about the Switch getting too hot with a battery strapped to its back. However, this battery case has very good heat dispensation. There are slots for the air vents on the back and for the fans on the top. Then the Switch itself doesn't sit right against the battery, but it sits on top of rubber pads. This not only keeps the Switch in place, but it also lets air ventilate between the Switch and the battery. This battery case is also safe to use. It has overcurrent protection, overload protection, and short circuit protection. Regarding Switch consoles being bricked by chargers and docks, docks brick switches when they don't use the correct USB-C protocol but chargers can brick if they don't use the correct resistor in the charger. However, a lot of chargers use the correct resistor, and that is why there have been very little incidents with chargers breaking switches. I cannot confirm if this battery charger uses the correct resistor, but I do trust it. The battery itself is super easy to take off and put back on. It has a hinge that clasps onto the switch, so it attaches securely, but it's a breeze to take off since you can just open up the clasp. I just have two main complaints with this grip. The first is the battery section is heavy and bulky. Any battery case is going to make the switch heavier, but this one feels extra bulky. Although considering it only cost $40, it's completely understandable. A thinner battery with a 10,000 mAh capacity that also offers USB-C power delivery would make for a much more expensive product. Also, because the grip splits apart, you can easily play it in tabletop mode to prevent it becoming uncomfortable with the added weight. The second issue is that the Joy-Con are extremely hard to take in and out of the grips. The grips use a hard plastic and they will definitely scratch or leave black marks on the very top part of the Joy-Con if you take them in and out a lot. If you do use this grip, I think it'll be best if you keep the grips on a set of Joy-Con. And really, they are so comfortable, you probably will not want to take them off. Although this does mean you can't take advantage of the extra card slot storage in the grips. In the end, both issues aren't a big deal, but I do wish that the grips had a more flexible plastic at the top where it attaches to the Joy-Con. The Big Blue is a very good grip a great battery case, and an excellent product all things considered. The next two grip cases are from Moomba. Moomba has a lot of great Nintendo Switch accessories, and their two Switch cases are no different. Now the thing you have to keep in mind with these is they are marketed more as hard shell protective cases than grips. But regardless, these hard shell cases change in effect how the Switch feels in your hand. They offer a different grip. First we have the thin case. It costs $15 and comes in four distinct colors, black, royal blue, a bright green, and a bright pink. When I unboxed the Moomba, held it in hand, and put it on the Switch, it reminded me of the Spect brand phone cases. The back of the case is a very rigid, translucent plastic, and around the sides, there is a more rubbery plastic. On the back, there are also grippy ridges, like some of the Spect phone cases. This design with the frosted, translucent back is excellent because it won't easily scratch, but it also lets the logo of the Switch show through. The quality is excellent and it fits snugly on the Switch. However, it's easy to put on and not too hard to remove. There are also cutouts for all the air vents, the charging port, etc. The case is meant to be slim, but it feels comfortable in the hand. My only complaint is the back feels a little too smooth. I really wish that they would have added more of the grippy lines on the back. I think that would have made it a lot more comfortable for those with bigger hands. For what it is, the Moomba Thin case is great. It offers protection while still maintaining the thin profile of the Switch and offering a slightly different feeling in the hand. 
Then we have the Moomba Rugged Case. Again, it is marketed more as a protective case, but it also advertises ergonomic secure grip handles on each side. This grip costs $18 and comes in four colors, an all black, blue on black, red on black, and a black on lime green. The Moomba Rugged Case offers more protection with a shock absorbing TPU bumper. Although even with its more rugged build, the design still manages to look good. Like the thin case, this has a back section that is translucent, so the Switch logo shows through. On each side of the case, where the grip indents are, there is a textured pattern that has a mix of glossy and matte strips. This texture feels good in the hand, but the actual indents for the so-called ergonomic grip aren't well placed for my hands. Even so, I still find it really comfortable in most situations. Still, I think it could be more ergonomic, but everyone is going to prefer different styles for grips. And that's the point of the video, so you can find which one will be best for you. Like the other Moomba case, this one also fits on very well, and it has great materials and build quality. The Moomba Rugged case is a great option for those who want to add extra protection for their Switch while keeping it looking good and adding a bit of extra grip. Second to last is the JE Tech Grip. This is a very popular grip on Amazon. It costs $20, but it usually goes on sale for less. It comes in black, a plum pink color, a pale green, and a bright baby blue. First of all, I ordered a new one, but the unit I received was used, which I really did not appreciate. The packaging was already opened and the grip was covered in sticky residue. This was disgusting and I had to use Goo Gone to remove and clean the case. But if you can get a brand new one, this grip is actually surprisingly good. The extended grips on the back may not look like much, but they are surprisingly comfortable. I personally find it more comfortable than the Axie Meat and the Moomba cases. Although this one definitely doesn't offer as much protection. It is made out of a flexible plastic material that actually has some heft to it. The grips themselves actually are textured, which feels nice. I almost wish they were a bit more grippy, but it gets the job done. There are precise cutouts for the kickstand, ventilation, etc. In addition, the bottom has a giant cutout that will let you use Bluetooth adapters that sit flush to the console like the Genki. The only real downsides are that it is very hard to get the case off and the fact that I was sent a disgusting used product. It was the last one left when I ordered it, so maybe that's why. You might want to stick with the main black color that doesn't get low in stock. Either way, this is still a very solid grip. Lastly, we have the Satisfy Pro Gaming Grip. I covered this grip twice before, so I won't go into too much detail. The grip itself is super comfortable for a lot of people out there. It has unique asymmetrical grips that are supposed to make it more comfortable to use the analog stick. For me personally, in some positions I found it more comfortable, but in other positions it was not comfortable. I felt like the grip was too big and too small at the same time, so I personally didn't have a consistent experience with it. But I know a lot of others out there love this grip and find it super comfortable, so it's definitely a great product. It just isn't for everyone. I no longer use the Satisfy Grip because it has started leaving black marks on my Joy-Con, and others have had at least scratches. But I reached out to them and they said they only had about 12 complaints and that it was not a widespread issue, so that is good to know. On top of this, when I emailed Satisfy, they told me they are working on a new version that will not scratch your Joy-Con at all and will be a lot better. So you might want to wait on their new grip that comes out this summer. There you have it. Those are 8 of the best grip cases for your Nintendo Switch. Each one is really completely different. I hope this video has helped you in deciding which Switch grip is right for you. Personally, my favorite is the Skull & Co grip case because of the customization that really helps with the comfort. However, all the other grips I covered are solid options all things considered. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and be sure to smash the like button. And if you are considering purchasing any one of these grips, I would really appreciate it if you use the affiliate links in the description as they help support the channel. But now I want to hear from you. Do you already own any of these grips? Which one would you want to buy? Are there any other grips you recommend? Let me know your take in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching.